woman, managed to sell a painting for tens of millions of dollars, and even had her portrait on the Mexican banknote. Let's go back to when little Frida was 18. One morning, Frida snuck into the school auditorium and saw a painter named Diego. He was making art with a nude female model. Such a pioneering idea was a bold endeavor at the time. Diego's wife saw it and had a huge fight with him. After his wife left, Diego began to make out with the model, but Frida ruined it by shouting. Just keeping you honest, Anson. Frida's father was a photographer, and under his tutelage, she had a great talent for art. Her behavior was a bit unconventional. For example, when she took the family portrait, she deliberately dressed in men's clothes. On a seemingly ordinary morning, Frida got on a bus with her boyfriend. There was a decorator on the bus with gold powder. Frida chatted with him curiously, but then the bus had an accident and crashed into a building on the side of the road. The gold powder was all over them. Frida suffered serious injuries, from her spine to her collarbone, her ribs and her pelvis. A metal bar pierced her body, resulting in a shattered foot. Frida woke up after three weeks of treatment. The family's savings were wiped out. Her mother was forced to accept that she would never walk again, but her father tried to borrow money, not wanting to give up hope. After all, Frida was his favorite child. Her boyfriend came to see her with books and flowers. Eventually, he stumbled over his plans to study abroad. Frida was dumped. She started painting butterflies all over the plaster. But no matter how much she painted, she couldn't be reborn. After she had painted all over her body, her father brought her a drawing board and held her in his arms. Her mother wept in silence. That's when Frida painted the first self-portrait she ever created. Then she began to paint more and more people. And that afternoon, she gave her parents a big surprise. She tried to get up and walk on the ground to feel the life. The first thing Frida did when she could walk again was to take her paintings to the painter Diego. Diego was now famous, and Diego managed to recognize her. I don't have time to chat with schoolgirls! I'm not a schoolgirl, Panson. Frida wanted Diego to see if she could be a painter, but Diego said that if she really wanted to be a painter, she would paint until she died, because painting would be an indispensable part of her life. She has to work to earn a living, so if she's not cut out for painting, she has to find another job to help her parents. Diego saw that she was sincere and let her leave her paintings behind. After work, Diego saw Frida's paintings and was immediately attracted to them. He found her the next day. Do you actually believe that I should continue to paint? Yes. After that, Diego took Frida to various parties. He introduced her to different friends. The clash of artistic and political views immersed Frida. At the parties, she drank half a bottle of wine in one sitting. A spirited tango attracted everyone. As the relationship progressed, she and Diego became close companions and friends. Eventually, they fell in love with each other. Soon they were married, but their happy married life turned into a complete nightmare. When Diego's affairs turned sour, a woman bursts into the wedding, slaps her leg and asks the groom if he likes it. Then she lifted the dress of the crippled bride to try to show her prosthetic leg. This woman was Diego's ex-wife. In fact, Diego's been divorced twice. Frida's mother didn't approve of her marrying Diego, but respected Frida's wishes. At the wedding, Frida turned to her husband. Diego was drinking and didn't want to help her. Frida was furious, but on the honeymoon, Diego was able to make her feel better with a few words. The next morning, Frida thought Diego had made breakfast in advance to make amends, but his ex-wife was staying over for a while, and she even made breakfast. Frida didn't hesitate to throw it away. Since then, Diego has returned to work, but the scent of other women's perfume stoned Frida's nose. Frida finally realized that Diego believed that sex and love could be separated, something as simple as a handshake for him. Diego had said so when it proposed. Unfortunately, I'm physiologically capable of that. Frida thought he'd change because of her, but she was wrong, just like Diego's ex-wife said about him. He's the best of friends and the worst of husbands. To ease her pain, Frida indulged in alcohol and dancing. Meanwhile, Diego's paintings begin to take America by storm. He took Frida to New York with him. During that time, Diego hung out in all sorts of places, with celebrities and movie stars. He was surrounded by a succession of women. Frida was able to tolerate Diego, because Diego's charm was one of the reasons she loved him. But then Frida suddenly became pregnant. Her body had recovered from the car accident, but pregnancy was still a huge risk to her. One night, Diego came back from playing and found Frida covered in blood. He immediately took her to the hospital. Unfortunately, the baby could not be saved. Frida was devastated. She drew a picture of her disappointment and sadness as she looked at the molded baby boy. Diego sobbed at the sight of it, but the tragedies didn't stop there. Frida had just been discharged from the hospital when she received news that her mother was seriously ill. She rushed back to her hometown to accompany her mother on her last journey. At her mother's funeral, 
Frida's sister also came back, her face still bears the marks of her ex-husband's violence. But fortunately, she was divorced. Diego, who was in the United States at the time, was also in trouble. Because of his politics, his investors decided to withdraw their money. The murals he had already painted were destroyed. So Diego and Frida decided to move back to Mexico to help her newly divorced sister through the worst of it. She brought her home. The woman found her sister and her husband making out when she got home. Frida couldn't take it anymore. She locked herself in her room and refused to respond to Diego's apologies. There have been two big accidents in my life, Diego. The trolley and you. You are by far the worst. Frida cut off her long hair and chased away anyone who came to comfort or mock her. Then she turned her sadness and humiliation into a new self-portrait. Then Diego's ex-wife came to visit her with Marta's encouragement. Frida found her way back, but then Diego found Frida and asked for her help. Frida thought it was ridiculous. Diego said that John, a political figure they both admired, had been expelled from his country. Diego convinced the president to grant John asylum in Mexico. So he wanted to put John in Frida's father's house to save him from assassination. Frida finally agreed, but Diego didn't realize that he was leading the enemy into his home. With Frida and John attracted to each other and understanding each other, it seemed like everything was meant to be, but it wasn't long before John's wife noticed something was wrong in the intensity of their stare. John was forced to move out. Diego was furious when she found out. She married him, even though she knew what kind of man he was. Frida had realized that Diego would be her forever best friend, but never a loyal lover. After this, Frida came to Paris. Like Diego, she began to surround herself with all kinds of men and women. She even appeared on the cover of a famous magazine, but she still wrote to Diego. All the rage of our 12 years together passes through me, and I'm left knowing that I love you more than my own skin. Soon after, news came that John had been assassinated. Diego became an unexpected target of suspicion. He filed for divorce and moved to California so as not to involve Frida. Frida was taken to prison for questioning, but she never revealed anything about Diego. Diego, who was far away from home, found out about the incident and immediately pulled some strings to get Frida out of jail. But the jail time had taken a toll on her health. Her toe became infected and was eventually amputated. Her new pain became Frida's inspiration. Once again, she drew herself. When things settled down, Diego finally returned. This time he came back to ask Frida to marry him again. I've lost the toes of one foot. My back is useless. I have an infection of the kidneys. I smoke, I drink, I curse. I can't have children. I have no money and a stack of hospital bills. Frida and Diego were together again. It was as if the world was colorful again. But Frida's face became paler and paler. She could only paint from her bed. When she was in pain, she had to rely on tranquilizers to calm her down. Diego helped her organize an exhibition in Mexico. Frida attended the show while lying on her bed. But that didn't stop people from admiring her. On the occasion of the 25th anniversary of their wedding, Diego presented a ring, and Frida passed away in his arms. And that's where the story ends. Every painting of a famous woman painter is imbued with the pain of her life. Frida was like a passionate rose. She burned herself out in love and in art. And in the flames, the most beautiful flowers bloom. You can subscribe to Maroon Recap for more great movies.